G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. Welcome to the workshop. And we're continuing with pencil case number four of the Marta B pencil case collection. Now, Marta is one of my patrons from Patreon, and I really enjoy the support I'm getting from all you people out there. Thank you so much. Once this project is finished, we're going on with another project, which is the William Davis cabinet. Billy Davis is another patron of mine. And following that, we've just finished organising the John Mahoney carving chisel cabinet, which will be a wall-mounted cabinet. So that's a couple of months down the track. But what I'm doing is naming projects after people who give me support through Patreon. If you want to know more or watch the extended version of this video, by all means, log on to my Patreon page and you'll find all the details there. So thanks once again for all your support. It means a lot and it gets me down in the shed and working as hard as I do. So, on with the pencil cases. What we've got, we did the first one, which is a very basic one, with end grain here. We then reduced the end grain and got rid of these unsightly little holes. It was another basic box. Then we got rid of the end grain totally and did a mitered box with a slightly raised lid and we recessed the bottom so it wasn't just stuck on the bottom of the box. What I want to do with the fourth box is take the mitered box a step further down the line and we're really starting to get into the intricacies of box making with this one. I want to use a solid timber base which means I can't have it sitting flush like that. I'm going to actually have a raised panel lid and the raised panel will be flush with the borders of the box itself and I'm going to be using a router bit for that one. Also I'll show you a way that you can make this sliding top so you don't get these unsightly holes and see the top of the sliding lid itself through there. I'll also be putting some little keys in here to give it added strength and a raised panel on the bottom of the box. Here they are with the slots cut in them. Unlike what I did with the other mitre box was cut this part off and then we actually glued that onto the lid. So when it went in we had a lip there we could use. What I'm going to do with this because I want to get rid of these unsightly gaps and also seeing the lid there. So what I'm going to do is go over to the table saw or bandsaw. In this case, I'm going to use a bandsaw. Now, where I've cut that off from the bandsaw, you'll see I've just got the finest of slithers actually below the slot. Now, unlike this box, which we actually made the box, glued it together and then fitted the top, this one that we're doing now, I'm going to actually make the top and fit it to the box before I put the box together. To get the raised panel, I'm going to use a router bit. In this case, I'm using a cove with a bearing follower. If you haven't got one of those, you can also use one of these, which is a core box bit. Just make sure you've got a good router set up with a firm fence and use all the safety paraphernalia they give with your router because using routers can be very dangerous if you're not following the manufacturer's specifications and using all the safety gear. Actually, before I go over to the router table to route it, I've got to cut it to size. The length of the slot to where the mitre comes in on both sides, that'll be the length of the lid, and the width will actually be from there to there. If you cut that and then just shave a little bit off, it allows it to have a little bit of movement because you don't want a tight fit. Now I'll go over to the saw and I'll cut this to size. As a matter of fact, while I'm there cutting this to size, I'll also cut the bottom, which, if you can tell, is a lot thinner than the top. The top, I want to have a raised panel that is level with the top, and obviously the bottom, I don't want it raised that much that it pokes out the bottom, so I've got a much thinner piece of timber there.
And there we have it. A nice lid that's got a good profile on it and it's even all the way around. Just to check it. Goes in there quite nicely. Now this bit that we cut off, I've got to glue onto one end. Now it's important when you glue it together that you get these lines here and here marrying up with the corners of the mitres. That way you know it's going to be square to the lid and it'll be square to the box. Flatten a little area here or take a little bit from here so it sits nice and square. And get a sharp knife and then just lightly mark along that lip. I'm just going to take ever such a small cut along there. Now when I put this on here, I've got a nice flat area for this to sit on so I can now glue that in place. Whatever glue you choose, just put it down in that slot there. making sure it is nice and square to the top. Let's get rid of any excess glue. Save cleaning it off later. Just give it a test fit to make sure it marries up. At this stage, I'm not concerned about the fact that it doesn't meet these sides here. And the bottom is exactly the same way as we did the lid in this box here. Decide which part you want to be up, which is going to be the bottom of the pencil case, and then the other side will be down. And it's the downside that you're actually going to put the raised top on, if you like, or raised bottom. So if that's going to be the bottom of the pencil case, just mark that. So when you open the pencil case, that's what you're going to see. So with your marking gauge set at 3mm, use the surface you're going to see and mark off 3mm all the way around. And then on the underneath, which is the side that's pointing downwards, mark with that tool. So to recap, you measure down 3mm from the part that you're going to see when you open the pencil case. That's marked on this edge, and then on the bottom, just do an inch or three quarter of an inch, or whatever you like, around the inside. Now we get it plain, put it in the vise, and you can use a router for this if you like, but I still like to do hand tools if I can. So if you wanted, you could use exactly the same profile bit that we did before to make the top, and that can go on the bottom, but I'm choosing to use a hand plane for this. And like before, I'll tape over on this line, so it stops me from going over. It's not as critical with this as it is with the top that we did last week. That was this one. Because basically this is going on the bottom of the box, but it's still good practice and it's a good routine to get into. I'll just grab a block plane. And every so often, just take it out and see how close you are to the line. Haven't got far to go. And with the test piece I've been using, is just a piece of scrap with my saw blade kerf in it. That's pretty good. So I'll do the same to this end, then I'll shoot the long boards, and that's our base finished. I'm just gonna hit it with a bit of 220 on the bottom, and just arrows over the edges. And this should be dry by now, which it is. All things being equal, this bottom that we just done should fit in the top, which it does. If it's uh, hard to get in, you might have to just arras 
underneath the edges like that or on the ends or whatever or take it back and plane a little bit more off but if it fits in like that you know you're in with a chance now this lip I'm actually going to go and take this completely off so now you can see it's nice and flush when I put it into the pencil case we've got a gap here now in order to get rid of that gap what I have to do is push this bottom one up and now the gap's gone but these are too long underneath so it's back over to the saw table the thickness we want is the thickness of the top with the lip and also the part underneath so you just pop it there slide your fence over and that's it drop your guard down and remember to take it off the bottom not the top so now if we put all this together what we should end up with is a box that's equal on the top and on the bottom push that all the way down and as they say the proof's in the pudding so let's see here we go so now we know the base is nice and even the top's even so now we set about doing what we did with the top slide and we can go back over to the saw and put the slots in to take a solid timber bottom. Now, as I've said before in, in several videos, I always have the blade furthest away from the fence when I'm cutting slots. However, there is always exceptions to the rule and this happens to be one of them. Because I've got four pieces to cut, one piece is narrower. So if I was to set this fence up to say cut my slots there, a certain distance from the fence when I come to this little narrow bit it's not going to work so in this particular instance I don't like doing it but I will I'm setting the blade up closer to the fence and to get the depth I get the bottom that I've made hold it up against the fence and I don't want the bottom to be touching the fence because that's going to be too close to the base so I set it up have a look and then I'll just move it a little bit further out and we'll see how that looks